In this video, we will discuss fibroadenoma and phyllodes tumor, which are the stromal neoplasms of the breast. So let's see this diagram. You can see this is a simplified view of the breast. These are the ducts and these terminal portions of these ducts are called terminal ducts and this terminal duct open into these acini. Now together this terminal duct and its associated acini are referred to as lobule. Now the concept is that the stroma or connective tissue which is present inside a lobule is called intralobular stroma and the stroma that is present in between multiple lobules is called as interlobular stroma. And the fibroadenoma and phyloids tumor are the examples of neoplasm that arises from the intralobular stroma, not from the interlobular stroma. Now after you have learned this, the next concept to be studied is that fibroadenoma and phyloids tumor are similar in a way that they are intralobular stromal tumors and they both are biphasic. What do we mean by biphasic? Bi mean two. So actually in fibroadenoma and phyloids tumor, there are two types of tissue that are proliferating. One is the connective tissue present in the stroma that is usually fibroblasts and second is parenchymal epithelial cell. But remember that the neoplastic cells that are present in these neoplasms are actually these connective tissue cells, these fibroblasts that are present in the intralobular stroma. But as these growing fibroblasts release some growth factors, they cause proliferation of the surrounding epithelium, surrounding parenchymal epithelium of these SNI. So even these epithelial cells of SNI start to grow, but these will not be referred to as true neoplastic, rather this is called reactive proliferation. So remember that fibroadenoma and phyllodes tumor are both intralobular stromal neoplasms and they are biphasic, which means that not only the fibroblasts are growing, but also the associated or surrounding epithelial cells are also growing. But remember that these are fibroblasts or connective tissue mesenchymal cells that are neoplastic. Epithelial cells are not neoplastic, their growth is just reactive. So this is the similarity between fibroadenoma and phyllodes tumor. Contrary to this, interlobular stromal tumors are monophasic, which means that in interlobular stromal neoplasms, only the stroma component is growing and the epithelial component of these SNI do not grow. So they are referred to as monophasic. Now let's study these two neoplasms in detail. The first is fibroadenoma. And the first important point to learn about fibroadenoma is that, that fibroadenomas are the most common benign tumors of the female breast. Secondly, as far as their morphology is concerned, they appear as well circumscribed gray white nodules. Why they appear well circumscribed? Because they are benign tumors and they have well differentiated boundaries. Secondly, the cut surface shows slit-like spaces. Why slit-like spaces? Because in fibroadenoma, when fibrous tissue is growing, it compresses the ducts. So the ducts become compressed and appear slit-like. So the cut section on the gross morphology of fibroadenoma will show slit-like spaces. Now for the microscopic features of fibroadenoma, the keywords to remember are fibrous tissue around adenoma either surrounding or compressing it. So you can see the name of this disease is fibroadenoma which contains the word fibro which means fibrous tissue and word adeno. So fibrous tissue surrounding adenoma either surrounding or compressing it. So let's translate this into histological picture. The first keyword is fibro. So what do we mean by fibro? Fibro means that there will be fibroblasts or connective tissue cells and there will be fibrous tissue in the stroma. So fibro just remind you of fibrous tissue and fibroblasts. And remember that there will be low cellularity in the stroma in fibroadenoma as compared to phyllodes tumor. When we will discuss phyllodes tumor, we will learn that in phyllodes tumor, the stroma is highly cellular, which means there are a lot of mesenchymal proliferating cells that are neoplastic. But in fibroadenoma, the cellularity is less as compared to phyllodes tumor. The second keyword is around adenoma, the word adenome in glands. So it implies that not only this fibrous tissue is growing, rather the epithelial structures are also growing. So you will see proliferative ductal epithelium. The third keyword is that this fibrous tissue which is growing around these glandular structures either surround it or compress it. So the pattern is such that if the fibrous tissue surrounds the glandular portion, it is called pericanalicular. However, if the fibrous tissue compresses these ducts into slit-like spaces, then it is called intracanalicular pattern. We will see this here in detail. So you can see this intracanalicular pattern. These are the ducts that are being compressed like this. So if the fibrous tissue that is growing compresses the ducts, compresses this epithelial element, it is called intracanalicular pattern. While what happens in pericanalicular pattern, in pericanalicular pattern, these ducts are not compressed. So you will see masses of fibrous stroma encircling ducts. So let me revise the microscopic features once again. Fibro stands for fibroblast and fibrous tissue in stroma and this fibrous tissue has low cellularity. 
Adeno means proliferating ductal epithelium. As you see, these are the epithelial structures. And you see this fibrous tissue either surrounded, surround the ducts in the cases of pericanalicular pattern or compresses it in the cases of intracanalicular pattern. Now let's discuss the clinical features of fibroadenoma. So the first important point to learn is that fibroadenoma usually develops in young women of age 20s or 30s. Secondly, it develops as a palpable mass which is mobile and not fixed. So if you are performing the clinical examination of the fibroadenoma, the fibroadenoma will be easily mobile and it will not be fixed to the overlying skin or underlying muscle. Thirdly, sometimes fibroadenoma may cause mammographic densities or clustered calcifications. You know that even breast cancers can be presented as densities or calcifications. So in cases of fibroadenoma, it is very important to do cytological examination or histological examination to rule out cancer because fibroadenomas can themselves present as densities or calcifications. Lastly, the fibroadenomas may grow fast during pregnancy. So the point is that the fibroadenoma is estrogen responsive. So in pregnancy, when there is a lot of estrogen released from the placenta, these estrogen can cause proliferation of these adenomas or these fibroadenomas. So remember these important clinical features. Now what is the pathogenesis behind the fibroadenoma? So fibroadenomas are considered as polyclonal hyperplasias of lobular stroma, intralobular stroma. So the cells of stroma undergo, undergo hyperplasia. Other than this, there can be cytogenetic aberrations that can result in these neoplasms. And together, these abnormalities result in stromal overgrowth, which is characteristic of fibroadenoma. And these stromal cells that are neoplastic release some growth factors that cause proliferation of epithelial components. So there is reactive proliferation of epithelial components. Hence the name adeno is also present in this fibroadenoma. Now let's discuss phyllodes tumor. Phyllodes tumor like fibroadenomas are biphasic, which means not only the stromal cells are growing, rather the epithelial components are also growing. And they are mostly benign, but few of them may metastasize. So this is the first difference of phyllodes tumor from fibroadenomas. Fibroadenomas are almost always benign, but phyllodes tumor can be metastatic in some of the cases. Secondly, as far as the pathogenesis of phyllodes tumor is concerned, they are usually caused by chromosomal abnormalities and most common of these is gain in chromosome 1q. So remember, gain in chromosome 1q for phyllodes tumor. Other abnormality behind pathogenesis is overexpression of hoax B13, that is a transcription factor and presence of this overexpression results in aggressive behavior of the tumor. So these are some pathogenetic abnormalities behind phyllodes tumor. As far as the clinical features are concerned, in, in phyllodes tumor, the women are mostly in the ages of 50s. So this is another difference between fibroadenoma and phyllodes tumor. In fibroadenoma, the women are usually young, 20s or 30s. But in phyllodes tumor, women are usually in their 50s. Secondly, phyllodes tumor can form large masses, relatively larger as compared to fibroadenomas. Thirdly, as phyllodes tumor are more aggressive, so they show more chances of recurrence. And hence, phytoxygen is done. Phytoxygen means that if the that if there is a tumor and you need to excise the tumor, you need to remove a relatively larger margin of the tissue in order to eradicate the disease completely. Otherwise, it will recur. And lastly, some of the phyllodes tumor may show metastasis. Lymphatic metastasis is very rare. Mostly hematogenous metastasis is there. So remember these clinical features. As far as the morphology is concerned, so grossly, phyllodes tumor appear as large bulbous protruding masses. And for microscopic features of phyllodes tumor, the keywords to remember are hypercellular stroma, overgrowing epithelium, creating a phyllodes appearance. So the first keyword is hypercellular stroma. Hypercellular stroma means that the growing or proliferating neoplastic stroma will be highly cellular. So there will be high cellularity of stroma that will contain mesenchymal cells and fibroblasts, etc. And other than this, mitotic figures will be very common. Mitotic figures are an indicative of rapid or fast rate of proliferation. So hypercellular stroma word is very important. This differentiates phyllodes tumor from fibroadenomas. In, with, in fibroadenomas, there is less cellularity while in phyllodes tumor, there is extreme cellularity. So you can see this is diagram of phyllodes tumor. You can see there are a lot of cells in this proliferating stroma. So high cellularity of stroma is a feature of phyllodes tumor. Secondly, this hypercellular stroma overgrows epithelium. So as phyllodes tumor are also biphasic, so epithelial components are also growing, but this hypercellular stroma is growing at a much faster pace and, and to a greater extent as compared to the epithelium. So you will see epithelium lining the proliferating masses of stroma. So you can see this is a large portion of stroma and lining it 
is this epithelium which is being compressed. So these are the epithelial structures. The third key word is that it creates a phyllodes appearance. The word phyllodes actually mean leaf like. So this whole architecture or morphology creates a phyllodes appearance. So the stroma appears as leaf like covered by epithelium. So you can see that this growing hypercellular stroma is in the form of leaf. This is a leaf. So this is a typical picture of phyllodes tumor. You see stromal overgrowth with extreme cellularity. You see leaf like pattern like this. And you see epithelium lining this proliferating stroma. Now in exam they often ask a question between the difference of histology in fibroadenoma versus phyllodes tumor. So remember this table. In phyllodes tumor there is high cellularity of stroma. While in fibroadenoma the stroma is less cellular as compared to phyllodes tumor. Secondly in phyllodes tumor there is higher mitotic rate. They are more aggressive tumors so they are growing more rapidly. While in fibroadenoma you see less frequent mitotic figures. Thirdly phyllodes tumor show more nuclear pleomorphism while fibroadenomas which are benign show less pleomorphism. Fourthly, in phyllodes tumor there is stromal overgrowth and it creates a leaf like pattern. This leaf like pattern is typical of phyllodes tumor and is absent in fibroadenoma. And in fibroadenoma there is relatively less stromal growth either in the form of pericanalicular or intracanalicular pattern. Lastly, in fibroadenoma there are well circumscribed boundaries while in phyllodes tumor there are infiltrative borders. So we remembered in the gross morphology of fibroadenoma that they are well circumscribed. But as compared to them, the phyllodes tumor are not well circumscribed. They usually invade the surrounding stroma. So they are invasive, locally invasive and have infiltrative borders. So remember these differences between phyllodes tumor versus fibroadenoma. Phyllodes tumor have generally high cellularity of stroma. They have higher mitotic rate. They have more nuclear pleomorphism. Their stroma is in form of leaf-like structure and they have infiltrative borders. So this is the difference between fibroadenoma and phyllodes tumor.